Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. My name's Ash or Brahma18, whichever you prefer. And today we are taking a look at uh, Giovanni Brian Broncos Rangers Tactics. This is a kind of Europa League um, special, I guess, as we look at Rangers in this video and on track Frankfurt in another video in this series. If you are new to the channel, what I do is I show you how to recreate real systems in FIFA 22. Uh, and as I say today, we are looking at Rangers. We'll go through the tactics, the player instructions, and I'll also show you a different game plan as well, a defensive game plan for when, generally when they're playing more Euro European games, particularly away. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And check out my Patreon, the link to that is down below. On there you can get access to a range of fantastic perks, including exclusive tactics videos that you won't see here on the channel, only on Patreon. My FIFA 22 custom tactics package with deep dives, ratings and rankings of every tactic we cover, such as this one. Um, my scouting package with real scout reports on lots of real players, as well as behind the scenes videos, early access, so many fantastic perks, a great way to support the channel if you can afford it right then let's get into it so we have of course van bronkhorst rangers and since he came in it's not been a massive change to what it was in gerard but you've definitely seen tweaks you've seen someone who's slightly more adaptable as well hence the different game plans that we'll talk about um, and that's really served them well particularly in europe and that's why we've seen them uh, one of the reasons why we've seen them march so far all the way to the final so first things first in terms of the balance game plan, we've got what's a 4-2-3-1, however there are a couple of position changes. So you're going to set yourself to the 4-2-3-1 wide, however you're going to change the fullbacks to wing backs, and the first reason we do that is to try and replicate their role as accurately as possible. We've seen how attacking both Tavernier and Barisic are, they like to get forward, they're a very big part of the way that Rangers like to attack. In addition to that, particularly Tavernier, you see someone who likes to get into the box often from uh, crosses on the left-hand side, you know, which shows just how committed he is. So as a result, we move these up to wing-backs as we try to recreate that as accurately as possible. In addition, the two wild midfielders are chained to wingers. The reason why we do this is to try and get them further up the field for one look to get them in the more advanced and attacking areas compared to wide midfielders that means you're going to try and pin back the opposition defense a little bit more as a result you can also kind of make them play a little bit wider on top of that so we do move these up to wingers other than that the positions are absolutely fine in terms of the team selection we'll go through a little bit more in the player instruction sort of uh, while we've gone for this one you know i'll talk about all the different instructions and so on and so forth so in terms of the tactics then, first off, what do we have off the ball where we've got a counter-pressing system and as a result, it's press after possession loss as they'll look to try and um, press the opposition immediately after losing the ball, but will then kind of try to regain and retain their shape. The width is 34, which as a result is going to be a more balanced approach. What you'll see is they're happy to kind of stretch a little bit more because what they like to do is they like the central midfielders to do a lot of the work outside and as a result make it less likely for the wingers, particularly someone like Ryan Kent, to have to do uh, so much tracking back. So they're happy to kind of shift within that unison. It does leave the switch on occasionally. Um, but don't forget, with only 34, it's not too kind of wide. There is a kind of narrowness to it. With the depth, it's on 60, which is giving you a mid block, but it's a kind of higher mid block. What they don't like to do is play too high and leave too much space in behind for the opposition to play, particularly in European games, but, but generally all around. Um, what this does is it kind of plays into that counter press because you're high enough so that you've got a, um, a kind of aggressive nature to you, but you're not kind of too committed in the sense that you're leaving too much space in behind and you can still, you know, kind of regain that defensive shape. On the ball then, what do we have? Well, we have slow build up as they look to try and work their way out from the back. They like to try and play to the centre backs and go from there. Um, now, it's also important to note that they will occasionally go along if they need to, if they're being pressed out. Or if they do see that kind of ball onto someone like a Kent or an Aribo, a Sakala, etc. Um, but not always. Generally, they're looking to try and play out from the back and through the thirds. And it's the same with chance creation as well. We've got possession here as they're kind of a little bit more patient going forward. You don't see them kind of hit teams on the counter as much. Occasionally, they do. Occasionally, you'll see the runs and they'll look to try and feed it in and maybe skip the midfield or skip a certain line. Um, but generally what they're going to do is they're going to try and work opening. So they, try, they like to do a lot of one-twos, a lot of give-and-goes, um, and so that's really what you can work out with possession. 
The width is up to 80, as again we've spoken about earlier, they like to stretch the play. A lot of their attacking comes from the wide areas. We've spoken about how important the fullbacks are. Again, the likes of Ryan Kent, and in this case, if someone like Rebo is out on the right as well, or Yanis Hadji, who's of course injured at the moment. They like to play through the wide areas, and this allows them to do that because they stretch the play. Um, you know, they get their wide players into more space. But what that also does, though, is it creates space in the middle because you're stretching the opposition. You can then get space for a runner like maybe someone like Arfield or maybe Ryan Jack or, or one of the attackers, etc. You're trying to create space for them as well. So it kind of does both, um, and it allows them to attack through either the middle or the wide areas. Players in the box is up to eight, giving you four players in the box. Trying to do my best with this to tr try and get kind of like the wing backs into the box if and when they can. Um, doesn't really work out like that, um, only very, very occasionally. But generally, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have the front three getting into the box on most occasions and then, you know, a wing back generally as well. And finally, with corners and free kicks, both of these are up to four. So with the player instructions then, starting off with McGregor at the back, we've got him on comes to crosses through saving on crosses, but then saving outside the box is actually on balance. You don't see him coming out of his goal too much in terms of out of his area. Um, I've seen him do it once or twice, but not too much. Um, and so as a result, this is just on balance as we try to make him a little bit more conservative in that area. For the two centre-backs, Goldson is absolutely fine. But what I've noticed in particular for Calvin Bassey is we actually have him on aggressive interceptions. He likes to step out a bit more and sort of assert himself and impose himself on an opposition attacker. The reason why he likes to do this is because we've seen how kind of physically gifted he is. His, his best traits are in that physical area where he's quite pacey, he's quite strong, just really good physique. And so as a result, he can afford to do that. He can afford to step out and still kind of compensate for it with that pace and with that strength as well. With the two wing backs or full backs, whichever you'd prefer, they're both on the same instructions. That is join the attack and overlap as we spoke about. They were obviously very important attacking wise, but they're also looking to create that width, really play on the touchline, stretch out, get themselves into a lot of space and as much space as possible. With the two central midfielders then, or defensive midfielders I should say, we have a couple of differing roles. First off, with someone like John Lundstrom, they always like a, a kind of deep playmaker on the pitch. So whether that's Lundstrom, whether Kamara kind of drops back, or occasionally they'll play someone like Stephen Davis, they're always looking for that deeper playmaker on the pitch. So with the deep playmaker, which is Lundstrom in this case, we've got him on cut passing lanes, which is going to be the same for the left central midfielder as well. But his attack support is stay back while attacking. So he's kind of acting as that pivot in possession. Um, and then on top of that, with the defensive position, he's on cover wing, as is the other defensive midfielder. But positioning freedom is free roam, as we're trying to get someone who's going to kind of drop into those pockets of space a bit more and show for the ball a little bit more, just provide a little bit of movement, as that kind of roaming-esque deep playmaker would do. Now, on the other hand, with Ryan Jack, who's kind of more of a... A ball winning midfielder slash a, just an all-rounded central midfielder. We've got him on balance attack because what we're doing is we don't want him running in behind the strikers. But what we do want is occasionally he's going to get forward and kind of try and support the attacks, particularly in the attacking third. Not so much getting into the box, acting as a box-to-box -box mid, but just supporting those attacks, pushing up a little bit further to offer another possessional option. And that's what we're trying to do with balanced attack. On top of that, we position freedom. This time, he's on stick to position, as opposed to Lundstrom, who was, of course, on free roam. With the attack midfielder, in this case, it is Glenn Kamara, and I'll show you how it does kind of change depending on the player. We've got him on comeback on defence to make sure he's tracking back, but then his support on crosses is stay on the edge of the box for the cross. Kamara's not someone who's looking to get into the box. Naturally, he is kind of a deeper player, um, but we have seen him particularly in kind of recent weeks, the last month or so, he's kind of played a role where he's pushed further at the pitch a little bit more, um, partly to do with obviously the, the injury issues and stuff, but he's also playing fairly well there as well. In fact, I think he's actually better further forward up the pitch as opposed to playing deeper. So we've seen that, and as a result, his position freedom is drift wide as well. He likes to make runs into the wide areas purely to try and support the opposition, but also he makes space for both the striker and someone like Ryan Jack, who will obviously get forward a little bit more as well. Now, how does this change depending on who is in there? Well, if you've got someone like Aaron Ramsey in there for some reason, for example, who we've known as someone who is at his best when he's getting into the box, acting as a second striker, scoring lots of goals, etc. This time what you'll have is you'll have him on getting to the box for the crosses rather than stay on the edge of the box. 
and then you might see someone like one of the wingers is less likely to get into the box as a result. And it's the same for someone like Scott Arfield as well, who kind of plays that similar kind of box-to-box, -box, you know, second striker kind of role. Um, so you can do that as well. But then when it's Glenn Kamara, obviously we revert back to the other instructions. So with the two wingers then, um, we've got completely differing roles here. Starting off with Joe Aribo, and again I'll show you how this changes depending on if someone like Sakala is playing here, someone with a bit more pace or Scott Wright. So we've got him on comeback on defence to get him tracking back. But then his chance creation and support runs is cut inside and come short. As with Rebo, we're trying to, rather than getting him penetrating the opposition's defensive line, instead what we want is him coming short, showing for the ball and working with the ball because that is when he's at his best, that kind of tricky, tough to get the ball off him, etc. So that's what we're really trying to do there. His support and crosses is also getting to the box for the cross. Now, again, as I spoke about, this does change depending on who's playing there. So let's say someone like Sakala or Scott Wright is playing there with a little bit more pace and movement. In this case, what you're looking for is with support runs, you're looking on getting behind. And then with chance creation, what you actually want is balanced. With getting behind, naturally, as I say, they're going to try and run in behind the back line and help to give you an, an element of penetration. But then chance creation, rather than cutting side, it's still balanced because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get him close-ish to the wing-back Tavernier on that side so that they can work those one-twos that we spoke about earlier. So as a result, we have it on balanced as opposed to cut inside. On the other hand, with Ryan Kent on the left-hand side, we've obviously got someone who, you know, a lot of the attacks are kind of formed around. Very, very talented player. Um, for defence support, he's actually on basic defence support, so we'll only track back occasionally. As I kind of alluded to a bit earlier in the video, they're trying to work away where he's not constantly having to track back. They want him to try and save energy, so as a result, he'll only be occasionally do that with basic defensive support. His chance creation is stay wide. He's often on the touchline waiting to receive the ball. They want to get him into space, certainly where he's at his best as well. Um, obviously, we've got, got Barisic on overlap as well. What you'll find is... There's not much as much of a collision as what you'd expect because ultimately they're both stretching the pitch but you will find a little bit of space for him to kind of make overlapping runs. And then support runs is actually on balance as we want a mixture between him getting behind and come short. Again, someone like Ryan Kent, he has a bit more license compared to under Gerrard when he was his role was a bit more limited and in my opinion they weren't getting the best out of him as opposed to this system where they are kind of encouraging him to play to his strengths a bit more and giving him more of a free role. And also his support on crosses is getting to the box with a cross. So finally, with the striker, in this case we have Kimar Roof. Naturally, he has been injured the last couple of weeks. Um, but generally the uh, system is the same, whether it's Roof or Ariba or Morelos. It only changes if Sakala plays up front. I'll show you how that changes very shortly. But we've got him on stay central and we've also got him as a target man. And the reason being is that he doesn't often look to penetrate in behind, constantly making runs, him, Morelos, etc. They will do occasionally but more when that chance forms rather than constantly trying to do it. Generally, what they're going to do is they're going to try and show for the ball and have it into feet. But what they don't do is kind of drop off really deep as a false nine would and come, you know, to the central midfield positions. So as a result, target man is the best way to replicate this. We've also got him to stay forward on defensive support so that he acts as that out ball. Now, how does this change if someone like Sakala is here up front? Well, this time what we have with Sakala is someone who does actually look to get in behind more. He'll look to try and penetrate the back line. Often what you've seen is kind of Rangers players. Sakala will sometimes look to drop off. And players like Tammany, for example, want him to run in behind. They're trying to play that ball in behind and they're not happy with him as a result. Um, and so generally what they're trying to get him to do is utilise that pace and you know cause another opposition, try and stretch their defence and run in behind that back line. Right then, uh, if I just kind of rejig these and then we'll move on to the uh, defensive game plan and show you how it changes. What we have here, as you can see, is a 5-2-3. And generally when I've seen them do this is against teams, particularly in Europe, um, especially in away games, but they've done it in, at home as well. Pretty sure they did it against Leipzig. Something that's worked out quite well for them. Generally what you're seeing is you're seeing Lundström drop into the back line and so it's basically forming a back five slash a back three whichever you prefer um so in terms of the tactics what i found is 
The width goes a bit wider this time as they can afford to do that because they've now got a bat 5 rather than a bat 4. So that goes up to 40. And then the depth will go down to 50, still a mid block, but just slightly drawn back compared to the 60 that it was on in the balance game plan. As again, it's a little bit more kind of pragmatic um, and just kind of risk wary. And then on the ball, we've got slow build-up, but this time with chance creation, instead of possession, we actually have forward runs. What I've noticed is because they're kind of slightly more defensive, they're then trying to hit teams on the counter-attack more. So you get the likes of Kent, you get the likes of Sakala, um, and then maybe one of the midfielders, whether that be Arfield or Ramsey, etc., you know, making those runs and really trying to, to hit teams on the counter-attack. So this time with chance creation, we have forward runs. The whip is on 50, as this time you can kind of shrink it a little bit because of the fact that, you know, you've got five at the back, you've now got the, the wing-back supported by a, a right and left centre-back. So as a result, you know, you can be a little bit more narrow um, and then obviously when you do lose the ball um, you've not got too much space to kind of make up for players in the box is still up to eight and the corners and free kicks are also on four as well in terms of the player instructions how does it change well we keep uh, Bassey on aggressive interceptions just out of his kind of personal preference Lundstrom actually stays the same as well um, so despite the fact he's moved in two centre back role you don't need to change that role in itself with the uh, two wing backs they're absolutely fine keep them on the same then the two central midfielders as you'll see now that they're not defensive midfielders there's a slight change with Ryan Jack we've got him as that out and out defensive midfielder so as a result he's on stay back while attacking and stay on the edge of the box for the cross um, he's also on cover wing and stick to position as well with Glenn Kamara who was naturally the attacking midfielder in the previous formation you've still got him to stay on the edge of the box for crosses but with his balance his attack and support he's unbalanced and that just means as we spoke about with ryan jack in the last system he'll push up a little bit forward just to try and support possession in the upper areas this time the wing backs are really going to kind of you know come into their come into their forefront basically and then with the attacking free um again it's the same for someone like a rebo and you will also get that with um you know someone whoever else is on there whether it be haji um sakala etc and with sakala he'll obviously be on getting behind. So exactly the same instructions as what he would have been in the balance game plan. With Ryan Kent, exactly the same as we spoke about in the last one. And that is also uh, the case for the striker as well. So all of the front three are exactly as they would have been in that kind of um, balance system. The main changes are really obviously the two central midfielders and then obviously you've dropped Lundstrom back into the centre back as well, giving you a back five as opposed to a back three. Right then, that just about rounds it off for this video and tactic. If you've got any questions about the system whatsoever, then please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to get back to you. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Lots of great content coming your way. And check out my Patreon. The link to that is down below. Lots of fantastic rewards and perks on there, um, and it's a great way to support the channel if you do have the money. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it, and want to see more and follow me on twitter the link to that is down below on that note we are going to round it off there thank you so much for watching and until next time i will see you soon